Late last week, the Environmental Protection Agency released proposed renewable fuel standards for 2014, 2015, and 2016. The EPA said last year's target, 15.93 billion gallons, was derived from what was actually produced and used. 2015s will scale up to 16.3 billion gallons, and 2016s will increase to 17.4. As the agency admits, the levels are below those initially set by Congress. That includes lowering ethanol mandates to what it believes is actually achievable. Under the proposed number, biodiesel would see an increase. On Thursday, we talked about the latest RFS numbers with University of Illinois ag economist Scott Irwin. We started by asking how valuable the announcement is to the biodiesel industry. I think it's so important that when you back up from the specific numbers, which are clearly important for the industry in the short run, but what's really important for the biodiesel industry is that if one takes the EPA policy as given and projects it for the remaining life of the RFS through 2022, essentially going forward, biodiesel is in the driver's seat rather than corn-based ethanol. Does that mean the industry can expand? Uh, probably. Uh, it's, there, there's a lot of variables that would go into that. Uh, the uh, U.S. EIA estimates that current production capacity for biodiesel in the U.S. is around 2.3 billion gallons. And there's a good chance that by 2016 or 2017, uh, we would go past that number. But on the other hand, uh, there's quite a bit of mothballed capacity out there, how much of it could come in to play, how much of it's registered for generating the D4 rinse credits, and then in addition, uh, how much competition from imports of biodiesel, conventional biodiesel and renewable diesel would we see. So there's a lot of variables. Was it as bad for ethanol as some of the pro-ethanol groups would believe? I think that depends on uh, what perspective you take. If your perspective is the long term uh, with regard to that key waiver provision and argument that the EPA used, yes, it probably was that bad. Uh, maybe that's from a, a policy perspective. But the standards themselves, the numbers that were proposed for ethanol, particularly in 2015 and 16, um, probably are not quite as negative as uh, many people's first reaction, and I would say including my own. If you dig deep into the EPA proposal and look at the details, uh, based on their assumptions, uh, they intended those ethanol mandates to force or pressure or push either higher blends of ethanol or non-ethanol biofuel like biodiesel. Uh, but that was based on the assumptions that they had built into, uh, into their analysis. Can you tell what role the blend wall is playing after this announcement or how they factored it into this proposal? I mean, it definitely was directly factored into the proposal. The way I like to frame it is to think of, in volume terms, how much push do you want the ethanol mandates to contain? And when I say push, I mean how much above the E10 blend wall do you want to force higher ethanol blends or additional biodiesel? And of course, that in depends entirely on your estimate of the E10 blend wall. Do you think it was coincidental or is this an effort to move the wall? The USDA announcing this week that it would spend $100 million to invest in blender pumps. Is that just ironic? I don't think so. Clearly, I mean, it seems to me that that was a definite coordinated um, announcement. And it's a part of uh, the EPA intending to provide some push towards higher blends in the ethanol mandates and then providing some incentives on the other side to provide the infrastructure that would uh, help facilitate those higher blends. When you look at the renewable fuel standard, do you think the EPA and Congress are struggling with what the intent or purpose of the law is compared to what it was initially put forward for? There's absolutely a major political struggle, but I think it's probably best 
characterized as uh, the uh, biofuels groups have one interpretation of the intent of Congress and the petroleum and oil industries have another different interpretation of what the intent was or at least should be now given reality. And that's the clash over the standards and what they mean and how they should be interpreted. The EPA's proposal will be open for public comment until July 27th and it says it intends to take final action by the end of November.